Oh, man.
I'm captivated by your anointing. My heart is raptured in your love. I'm captivated. I'm captivated by your anointing, Lord. My heart is raptured in your love.
Take me away, away with you, my love. Take me away, away with you, my Jesus. Oh, take me away, away with you, my love. Take me away. Away with you, my Jesus. Take me away. Away with you, my See our yieldedness, feel our hunger, Lord, reveal your glory now. See our yieldedness, feel our hunger, Lord, reveal your glory
At your feet of victory is my seat You paid it all at Calvary My plans, my faith is sealed to live for thee
to go. Wonderful, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, we love your presence. Holy Spirit, thank you for your goodness. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Father, you're so wonderful. You're so wonderful. Father, we just thank you so much for the tangible presence of the Holy Ghost. (laughs) You're so good, Father. We're so honored. We're so honored to be your sons, your daughters, to stand in your presence. Father, to be in this place, the holies of holies, the, the very sanctuary you dwell. To have an access and, and a communion with you by Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you so much for the blood of Jesus Christ that makes every offering, every sacrifice in here holy and, accept, and acceptable to you. Holy Spirit, we say you're welcome in this place. We thank you that you're here. We thank you that you're moving. We thank you that your presence is already working. Father, we have one desire. And that is to be with you, to have fellowship with you, to commune with you. Whew. Father, what glory, what an honor. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord Jesus. I love you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're so precious. You're so precious. You're so precious, Lord Jesus. <laughs> oh my goodness thank you Jesus thank you Lord Jesus thank you Father thank you Lord Jesus hallelujah hallelujah I hope you can feel the, the tangible presence of the Holy Ghost the Lord Jesus because he is here in a wonderful wonderful way Father, you're so good. You're so good. You're so good. I just, I'll tell you what, I, there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing better than just to feel completely saturated and overwhelmed by the presence of God. If you can't, if you, if you feel a little bit distant right now, I just want you to lift your hands towards heaven. If you feel like you're not, you're not getting, you're not tapping into that realm, just lift your hands towards heaven because the Holy Spirit is here to meet you. 
The presence of Jesus Christ is in this place. We are so honored to have the presence of the living God in this place. Father, I ask you now to touch every life. I ask you now, Holy Spirit, to move upon every heart. The tangible living presence, the fire of the Holy Ghost that dwells in this place. I ask you, Father, to, to just burn in every heart. Touch every life in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So wonderful, so wonderful, so wonderful. <laughs> You're amazing, Father. You're amazing. I love you so much, Lord Jesus. I love you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the reality of your presence. Father, that you come and you would commune with us. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> there's, just, there's just not words. There's just not words for it. Just, I, hope, I hope and pray. I'm, I can't see very well right now, but I hope and pray that, that you guys are, are feeling and, and touching this, this communion. We're so honored to be in this place where we can walk in to the holies of holies, the sanctuary of the living God, to feel the presence of of the Holy Ghost. What an honor it is. What an honor it is. Jesus is everything to me. He's everything to me. There's nothing else in this world that matters. I have this and I'm, I'm, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. And I hope and pray that you feel the same way because this is life. This is the life that Jesus came to give us. The most precious sacrifice, the most sacred offering came to earth to be made flesh, to go about everywhere performing signs and wonders, preaching this good news, the, the good news of the gospel, to live a sinless life, to then be crucified, to pay my debt. He bought me on that cross to redeem me and save me so that I could have this life, this life of Christ. And there's, I refuse to let anything Get in the way of this awesome life that God has had. Right? We all have circumstances and troubles and issues to deal with, right? No, we don't. I don't. I got gotcha. you. Jesus has all my circumstances. He's got all my troubles. My bills, they're his bills, right? Okay, I'm being a little silly there, but this is my point. My point is, I dare to believe that I am right now walking out the divine will and plan that God has for me. I am committed to being an obedient son, doing whatever he asks me to do, going wherever he wants me to go, and saying whatever it is he wants me to say. And in that place and in that position, I'm good. There is, if, there's a, if there's a challenge, there's a problem, here you go, Father. Because I, I, I know right where I am, I'm in the perfect will, and I'm in the perfect plan of the Almighty God. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can be seated. You can just keep playing a little bit for me. That, sound, that sounds good. Feels good. Oh, Father, you're so good. You're so amazing. So if you don't feel that way, if you don't share that uh, wonderful experience that I'm expressing, if the challenges, look, life brings challenges. Life brings issues, right? The, the point is, the key is, what did Jesus tell us to do? Take no thought. Take no thought for it. Right? So what is the key? What is the key to that? For me, as I, I pray and I meditate on that, look, it's not, I'm not going to let anything touch that deep realm and that, that emotion, that passion that is in my, in my heart, right? Sure, there'd be things that could be a frustration, but I'm not going to let that touch my heart. There's only one thing that can touch my heart. There's only one thing that can pull me, that can move me, that can, that, that can draw that, that deep expression, that emotion out of me. That's the love of God, right? that tangible presence of God. So that's what we want to do. That's one of the things I want to encourage you in tonight. Don't let things and challenges and circumstances be able to have access to that part of your life because that's a roller coaster. There's, there's only one rock. There's only one foundation, and that's Jesus Christ. Be rooted and grounded. Be, have your foundation drilled deep into that rock, the rock Christ Jesus. Amen? 
And let that be, let that be a consecrated realm. Let that always be a consecrated realm. Where, look, this is something I'm so blessed. My father has modeled for me. No matter how intense the circumstance, no how great the challenge, there was nothing and there is nothing that is going to prevent him from bringing that sacrifice, that offering, that worship, that praise to the Father, right? Now, it can be a challenge, but this is what we want to do, okay? This is what we want to learn to grow up in, to never allow anything to get in the way of that. And so I want to talk to you tonight about the offering. So Pastor Mark asked me to, to share a little bit and do the offering. And so, you know, always the offering ties in with the financial side of things, but I was just praying, I'm asking God, I'm like, Father, what is that offering? What is, just studying that, what does it look like to be the offering? What is the most important offering that we should be thinking about and focusing on? Okay, so I like to go look at models. I like to have an example to kind of study out. So there's all sorts of fantastic models throughout the scripture, right? Offerings that were given, right? How, especially throughout the Old Testament, how the offerings and the sacrifices were supposed to be prepared. It was very, very specific. Okay, but then it came down right to the most just blatant one. I'm like, Father, what is the greatest offering? What is the greatest offering that has ever been given? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was that offering. The most precious gift to the Father he gave specifically for me. What, a, what an amazing offering. So that now I can be that living sacrifice, that offering for the Father. So what I want to do is talk to you just a little bit briefly about what your offering should look like. You are a very, very important offering to the Father. The finances are important. The tithe is important. The areas of giving that we're supposed to participate, essential, very important. But you had better be living out the offering, the living sacrifice. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, thank you, Father. We're going to... Um, Yeah, Romans 12, 21 is probably where we're going to spend most of the time. But there's a few other just little notes that I was kind of writing down, sketching down. Um, just because this is becoming more real to me. Do you guys, how many, how many people remember um, consecrating a, a tithe of your year this year? Right? Who remembers that? You said, I'm going to give one-tenth of my day to the Father. And specifically in terms of evangelism, right? You guys remember that? Been doing it? If you haven't, that's why I'm up here, to remind you. Consecrating that time, living out that life. So I asked the Father, I said, you know, I was just praying. Just talk. I, look, I like to be honest. I like to be transparent with the Father. I just let him know what's in my heart. I said, Father, did I live for you today? And it hit me hard. The Holy Spirit just st stirred that up in me. Father, did I really live for you today? Father, did I live for you? I claim that the entire purpose for my existence the sole reason for my existence is to represent Jesus Christ, to go, about, to go everywhere, preaching the gospel, right? Praying for the sick. This is what I claim. This is who I am. This is what I so desire to be. I was just asking the Father, Father, did I, did I live for you today? And so I want to challenge you to let the floodlight of heaven shine on your soul, okay? The offering is important, the offering of your life, and it's every single day. We don't, know, we don't know how many days we're promised. Live every day like it's your last. Get up, I love getting up in the morning and just, Holy Spirit, I love you so much. I love you, Jesus, and I thank you that you direct me, you lead me, you guide me today in everything that I do and everything I say and just start pouring out my life to God. Start the day off like that. Don't wait until, you know, if you're like, if, if lunchtime's running, rolling around and you're like, oh, I haven't even acknowledged God, you should probably change that habit. Acknowledge God in all of your ways and he'll direct your path from the time you get up throughout the day to the time you go to sleep. Acknowledge God. Always be continually looking for the opportunities where you can pour out that offering. Right? I understand. We, we work. We go to school. Whatever you, you're, There's things that we have to do. Right? We're busy. But never miss that opportunity to live for Christ Jesus. Look what Jesus did. He, was, he had a lot of work to do. He was going around. He's traveling. Right? He's doing work. But every place he went, every time he came across someone that was in need, he ministered to them, right? That's what we want to do. If we're truly going to claim and say, yeah, I'm living for, for God. At the end of the day, can you, can you ask the Father, Father, did I live for you today? And hear in your heart, know in your spirit, yes, well done, well done, my good and faithful servant. Look, I listen, I, I listen to hear that every single day because if I'm not hearing it at the end of the day, 
Why can't I anticipate or expect that I'm going to hear that at the end of, the li- at my, of my life, right? Does that make sense? We want to have reality. I want truth in my life. I want truth in, in everybody here. Let's be honest before God. Let's be honest before him. That's what he's looking for. He's looking for a little bit of truth, a little bit of sincerity. And that's where he'll move in and, and he'll touch. So let's live every single day. Every single day asking, Father, did I live for you today? Father, I want to live for you. Am I living that out perfectly every single day? Am I getting every opportunity? No, I'm missing some. There's some opportunities I missed today. People I walked by, I probably should have prayed for. I know I should have prayed for. But my heart is to never miss an opportunity. And when I recognize that, I say, Father, forgive me. I want to be so sensitive to your Holy Spirit. Everything I, everywhere I go, everything I say, I want to be led by the Holy Ghost. That is my heart. And therefore, because of that, I will come unto the measure of the maturity Christ Jesus, even unto a perfect man, because that's what my heart is. I want to go everywhere preaching the gospel with demonstration, with with the mighty signs and wonders, with the miracle power of Jesus Christ. That's who I am. Amen? And I want you to have the same heart, and I know you do. I'm so blessed by every one of you. See the glory of heaven on your face and in this place. It's wonderful. The life of Jesus is so wonderful. The life of Christ that he has extended to us, it's amazing. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Yeah, be honest before God. He's looking for truth. Pastor Mark hit this good in the daily bread today, talking about the, the necessity for there to be some sincerity and truth, right? And, and he's talking about the example of what not to do in Matthew chapter 15, verse 8. Did you guys read and study that daily bread today? I know you did. Don't raise your hand. What is he talking about? He's, Jesus is saying, there's people that are drawing near to me with their lips, but their heart is far away. What is that? That's hypocrisy. That's a tough, that's a bad spot to be in. That is not being the offering that Jesus wants us to be. Never come into this place and go through the routine of just lip in the song. Pour out your heart. Pour out your emotion. Look at what Jesus pours out over us every single day. It's, if, if there's one thing you can get excited about, this better be it. Okay, this is something I'm working with the youth on, talking with the guys about. Look, I see how excited you get running around out there on the basketball court, on the soccer field, on the football field, right? There's some expression. There's some emotion. Jesus should be able to touch you more than that. He should be able to touch you more, okay? Now I'm going to offer some challenges tonight. Be stirred up. Don't be condemned. Be provoked to good works is what we want. We want to provoke you to good works because we want to be known as the people of God that are passionate, that this is real. Look, people can spot fake and hypocrisy and just another spiel from a mile away. When there's truth, when there's sincerity, when it's a reality to you, then you can minister that. Then you can convey that. You can can pass that off, right? With me? Amen. That's what we want to do. So I want you to know, even as Jesus Christ was that that perfect offering, that great offering, the most precious offering the Father could give, your offering, the offering of your life, is the most important sacrifice, is the most important offering that you can give. Realize the value of that life. People take life for granted. Jesus came and gave his life for us so that we can now live for him. Live for him in everything, in everything. Realize and recognize that every single day you're supposed to be pouring out that offering, that offering of your heart, the offering of prayer, the offering of praise. Just being the example, the witness of Christ Jesus. Amen? Learning to truly do his will. Learning to truly do his will everywhere we go. Jesus said, I don't do my own will. I do the will of the Father. And that's what we want to do. We want to model Model after Jesus everywhere we go, ministering and doing the will of the Father. Pastor Mark said this last service, and I wrote it down. It was awesome. I wanted to reiterate it. Offer your whole life. That includes your circumstances, challenges, obstacles. Put them all on the altar and call the fire down. It's a great place to be. Take everything, everything of your life, put it on the altar. Say, Father, this is for you. This is something I'm having a tough time with. Here you go. And I ask for your fire to fall. Guess what? The only thing that remains is the good stuff and what Father wants you to have. It's a wonderful policy. It's a wonderful way to live. It's working out great. Amen? 
Give everything. Just give it all to Father. He makes it so easy. He said, look, guys, don't take thought for what you're going to wear. Don't, don't take thought for where you're going to live. Forsake it all and come follow me. And he is a good father. He's going to take very good care of you. I promise. I promise. In everything. Look, there's some things in life. There's some challenges. There's circumstances, things we go through. I have no explanation for it. But I'll tell you what. I'm right in the middle of God's will and of his plan. And everything about my life is right in the middle of the fire of the Holy Ghost. And it's a wonderful place to be. I invite you. If you're not in that place, come. Because it is a great and fantastic place. Amazing, overwhelming, glorious place. It's the realm that the Father has purposed for us to live. Days of heaven on earth. To have that, that realm of heaven that we can just step right over into. Step right into. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's read that verse real quick. Matthew six thirty three. Matthew chapter 6, I know Pastor Mark has been encouraging for a while. Reading through Matthew, uh, yeah, Matthew 5, 6, and 7. Just read it over and over and over again. It'll change your life. I've been doing it consistently. I've been reading it, and then I've been putting it on repeat as I drive to work. And it is a fantastic chapter uh, and book. 5, 6, and 7. You ch it'll change your life. Let's look at 633. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your presence. Here we go. It sums it up. What am I supposed to do? Does anybody wake up in the morning? All right, what do I got to do today? Write out a list. Goals or accomplishments. Anybody write those out? I write them out. I like to get up and just write out things I'm going to do. It's because I got stuff to accomplish for the day. But you better be writing this one out. Rule, task number one. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. There it is. In everything we do, you say, oh, come on, man, give me a break. We, we all have, I have to go to work. I've got to take care of the mortgage. I've got a car payment. I'm putting the kids through college, et cetera, et cetera. Well, let me help you change your, your mindset on that. You, it's great to work. Have a job. I've got a job. But my job is for one purpose. It's where God has me. It is to advance the kingdom of heaven. I go to work every day, not to work for the boss or work for the paycheck, but to work knowing that I am advancing the kingdom. I have goals set, and I'm doing everything as unto the Lord. And everything I say, everything I do, I'm doing it unto the Lord. The heart, the, the, the mentality, that passion, that drive that is behind that action is very, very important. What is the motivation behind it? Let the Holy Ghost be the inspiration and the motivation behind everything that we do. Seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you so much for your glory, for your goodness. So now at the same time, we want to encourage you to honor the Lord with your finances as well. Because what does the Bible tell us? Where your treasure is, it's where your heart shall be also. Now the treasure of your time, the treasure of your finances, all those are, in very, are, are very precious to the Father. And when we honor the Father with them, He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. He will never withhold. He will never withhold. He's never going to hold back. So I want to encourage you in everything you do, especially your time. I know just about everybody in here, you're diligently giving your time and the work that is going into the new building, all of the events and all of the things that we're continually doing here as the abiding place to see San Diego reached. If you're not, get a little plug here. Tuesday nights, we have the School of Evangelism. Pastor Kelly is leading the charge in an amazing, amazing way. God has given him such an anointing to see this happen. We're so blessed. Last Saturday, how many people participated in what we did last Saturday at Hourglass Park? That's so awesome, guys. That's so awesome. If you didn't come, come participate. It's so fun because it just makes it, it was, it was probably one of the, I mean, it's some, one of the most effective things we do. Going out there and getting, getting the, the kids' lives, you know, just seeing them touched by the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. It's fun. It's easy. We make it very, very easy for you to engage in evangelism because that's what we need to see. Representing the light 
and the gospel of Jesus Christ everywhere we go. So Saturdays, get involved with the stuff that's going on. We're going to have another event coming up soon. Tuesday night is School of Evangelism. We have School of Missions. Saturday night we have School of the Spirit. There's so many awesome things going on. Youth is on, uh, is on Thursday night. Come and participate with everything that we're doing. Because if, if you will throw in with the vision that has been cast for this year, if you will come and participate and let your life be that offering, you're going to see amazing, amazing changes, amazing growth. God is going to use you. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. The stuff that is advancing right now with the School of Missions is so exciting. We're getting ready to do some fundraising stuff. Pastor Mark and Pastor Ann are actually in Oregon now at the MTC getting things prepared. We've got a lot to, uh, of work to do um, through this year because we're going to be bringing <clears throat> orphans from Nepal. Does everybody have a, a fair understanding of everything that's going on at the MTC? If you do, you have a fair, a fair understanding, the, the MTC. Okay, the MTC is a mission training center that the Abiding Places has started, and its sole purpose is to go and to reach the unreached people groups. Okay, so we have a, an organization called Amen Ministries, Asia and the Middle East Nations. That is where our heart is at. Asia and the Middle East. God has given us an extensive and incredible, miraculous network that we have where right now, a week ago, I could take every single one of you and give you 365 days a year to go and preach and you wouldn't be able to cover the, the opportunities in the area to cover in a lifetime, okay? We are so passionate to see people raised up, missionaries raised up to go into, and, and to preach the gospel to the unreached people group. So what the MTC is doing, one of the main uh, purposes of it is to bring the locals, the natives from the nations starting with Nepal, to our mission training center. We're going to train them in animal husbandry, some aquaculture and aquaponics stuff, also business, and in the Word, so that they are fully equipped to go back to their nation, being able to preach, being able to start a business and have food to, to then provide for their community, break the cycle of poverty that they've been living in, and to be a resource to their nation. It is a fantastic model that the Lord has given us, and it's, it's going to do great things. So if you're not participating in that, you want to know more about it, Paulina is in Finland. Talk to her. She is heading up the, a lot of the stuff that we're doing with missions. Get involved, guys. It's so exciting. This is stuff that, that, is, that we're able to participate right now that is going to last until Jesus comes. I love that. I think every time I get up, I talk about, I just love legacy. I love the legacy of the church. I love the legacy of family, the legacy that, that God has called us into, right? And, you know, business legacies are cool to study as well, but participating in something that has an eternal effect, eternal longevity, seeing that, that, that fruit and fruit that remains. So that's the MTC plug, okay? It's awesome. There's so many exciting, exciting things going on. Come and participate. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. I think that was everything I wanted to cover. Let me check one more time. As I'm checking, I'm going to have you come up and bring an offering. So prepare an offering right now. I was so blessed to see so many of you getting your first offering in, the most important offering, that offering of praise. It's wonderful to just freely praise and worship the Father. That's the most important offering, the most important sacrifice. Hallelujah. So if you have your offering prepared, come. What are you? What, are you what is this? Let me see. Oh, this is awesome. Okay, this guy, listen to me real quick. Everyone freeze, just real quick. Wednesday, April 2nd. That's next Wednesday, right, Pastor Geneva? Next Wednesday or the Wednesday, Wednesday after? In two Wednesdays, the second. Brother Joshua is going to be here. He is part of the Back to Jerusalem movement in China. Radical, radical guy. Pastor Mark was talking about it on Sunday. He was the guy that was in prison, right, that, that laid there all night glowing. Now, he's the guy too, right? They went, they would go to the river and he'd say, you know, he'd call in the fish, right? They had company come over, right? They didn't have food. So talk about miraculous living. They didn't have food. They had guests there at his place. And he goes to the river and he calls the fish to come in and get up on the bank. And they did. So this guy's, this guy's got some stuff to share. So let's pack this place out. Bring yourselves. Bring someone that is hungry and ready to hear the word. Amen? Amen. 
and come and see, uh, come and see the awesome things that God will impart. He's given, he's given special graces and special anointings to certain people. It's great to be able to hook up with that anointing because he has no partiality. You give to one, he give to another. Amen? Yeah. Awesome. So come and give. Thank you for holding that, that posture. That was radical. Some good freezes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Always give with an exuberant heart, a grateful heart, a rejoicing offering. Just thanking Father for, and blessing Father because he has blessed us. Amen? Hallelujah. Love you guys. Pastor Kelly, when you're ready, we come up. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you for your anointing, Lord. Man, we are a blessed church. I'm telling you, gosh. I mean, have you ever seen so few people do so much? Come on. I mean, everything we can, everything we see in the gospel, everything. I mean, we're preaching it in Jerusalem mightily here. We're doing it all over the world. We're just going for it. Everything that we got. Mm, thank God for the anointing. Man, we, I mean, we're just blessed. We're blessed. If you've ever been around the world, around the country, and been to any other churches or involved in any other ministries, then you know we are blessed. We might be few, man, but we are blessed. Over and over and over and over again, God's always cho He's chosen to use the few. He's chosen the few. A lot of times when there's too many, he'll just cut the thing in half. Make sure that man can't get any glory, that God's going to get all the glory. It won't be any, it won't be, it won't be any confusion whether it was God or it was man. We'll know for sure that it was God, and that's what's going to be the case here. It's going to be a sure thing uh, that what's going on here is God. It's all, all God. Man, I just love the anointing. I love the power and the presence of God. It's so awesome here, man. I mean, awesome. Hallelujah. Can you do that? Can you just like stop wherever you are and just let the glory of God begin to overwhelm you and overtake you just wherever you are right now throughout the day? Can, can you do that? Have you found that place of relationship? Is that part of your relationship where you just stop and His glory... His glory just, ah, hallelujah. We live for his presence. We, lived, we live to live in his presence. We love his glory. We love his tangible presence. I don't know what I would do without the tangible presence of Jesus. I don't know what I would do. I don't know what I would do. Before I had it, I was lost. Oh, man, when the glory of God came, invaded my life, it was wonderful. Changed everything. Fell in love with it instantly. I was a glory addict instantly. Immediately, his glory is what I wanted. It's all that I needed. I loved his presence. I loved his glory. Oh, and we love it. We love your presence. We don't do anything outside of your glory. Father... We refuse to do anything outside of your presence. We refuse to speak out of your presence. We refuse to do anything outside of your glory, Lord. It's where we're clothed. It's where we're endued with power. Thank you, Father. It's where we can truly speak as your oracles. It's where we can offer praise that's actually acceptable when it's bathed in your glory. All else is religion and traditions of men. We don't want any part of it, Lord. We don't want any part of it. We come to you with truth and sincerity in the inward parts, Father. Come to worship you. Come to adore you. We, we don't come to participate with our duty on Wednesday night. This is what I'm supposed to do at 7 o'clock on Wednesday night. We come to participate with your glory, with heaven. We, we are in love with you. We are genuinely in love with you, Jesus. We love your glory. We love this place called heaven. 
that elevates us from all the natural, all the carnal, all the normal into a place called holy, called sacred, called sanctified. The place where we speak from heaven and we can hear from heaven. This place of your glory, your wonderful realms, Lord. We love it. We love it. We love it, Lord. Father, we don't want to do anything out of religion. We don't want to do anything out of tradition. We want to do everything out of real, true, genuine passion and love. Not a supposed to, not a have to. Oh, Lord, I get to. Oh, Lord, I get to be in your glory again on Wednesday night. Oh, Lord, I get to. Again, I get to be in your glory again. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 We love your glory. Hallelujah. Church, do you know how much he loves you? Do you know how much? That all his delights are in the sons of men, that all his delights are in you, that he just loves you, that he's not, he's not holding anything against you. If you've confessed your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. That he's called you pure, he's called you holy, he's called you blameless. That he just loves you, that he just is trying to pour out he just wants to pour out, just to lavish you with his love. He who didn't withhold or spare even his own son, but he gave him up for us all. How will he not also with and freely give us all other things, taking care of everything? He didn't want you to work so hard to try to take care of your needs because Papa wants to do it. Papa wants to be the blesser. Papa wants to be the one giving out, pouring out, loving, lavishing you. Oh, Lord, we're going to stop working so hard. We're going to sit back and relax and enjoy your presence and just let, us, let, let you pour out on us. Just let you bless us. Just let, us, let you give to us freely, freely, unearned. Not one thing you can do to get it. Not one thing. You didn't do one thing to get this glory. You didn't do one thing to receive this present. You didn't one thing. You just said yes to Jesus. I'll follow your ways. I will follow you. I'll follow you. I've decided to lose my life. I'll lose my life and I'll follow you. Oh, Jesus, we just follow you. We follow you, Lord. We follow you. We follow you. We follow you. We follow you. Follow you. We 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 follow you. Wherever you lead, we follow you. We follow you. We follow you. Wherever you take us, Lord, we follow you. We follow you. We follow you. We love your ways. Your ways that are past finding out because they go on and on and on and on. We love your ways. We denied ourselves. We've taken your ways, Lord. We've traded our ways for your ways, your blessed ways, where you pour out and you lavish. And we just receive. And we just follow. And we just say, yes, Lord. And we just say, yes, Lord, to all you have. It's not hard. It's not easy. He's made it easy. His burden is easy. His yoke is light. It's the way the transgressor that's hard. This is the easy way. Sembambre si lera bo kulesi aramai le ne masubre me ne nebre vo dule ya sapaya. Ele ne mondo ne se brevele. Aramoste ele mondo aramande e remendo breve 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 yanda. Father, so we just pour out our hearts. We just pour out our hearts, Lord. Very real, very genuine. We just pour out our hearts, God, because we love you, because we're in love with you, because we're in love with you, because we're in love with you. We love with you. We love with you. Lord, we're in love with you. We love with you. We love with you. Do you have a song that just pours out of you when you think about him? Are you bold with your relationship? Are you bold with your relationship? Are 
Lord. Just to have another minute in your presence, another minute in your glory. It's our treasure. It's where our heart is. It's the thing that we long for more than anything else. Just to be with you. 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 Oh, it's what we need. It's what we want. It's what we desire. Father, we've developed a hunger and a thirst by being in your presence. Lord, we just want it more now, more than ever before. Because we spent so much time in your glory. We just want more. We just want more. We just want more. We know you freely pour it out. You freely pour it out. Oh, Lord, we just want more. Lord, we just want more. Lord, we just want more of your glory. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. I just don't know what I would do without the tangible presence of Jesus. It's so good. So good. You know, we're commanded to live here. We're, 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 we're actually called to live here in this place. With love, a love that passes knowledge and a, a joy that's unspeakable and full of glory and a peace that passes understanding. You can't do any of that with your mind. These are experiences. These are emotions that people are so terrified of being led astray by their emotions. Well, just give your emotions to Jesus. Just have a Holy Ghost filter for your emotions. And if it's anything but love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and all these other beautiful fruits of the Spirit, reject those emotions and only keep the Holy Ghost emotions. And these emotions go deep. These emotions go deep. You can feel them deep. Peace. You don't feel peace by faith. You feel peace. I don't even know if you have peace unless you feel peace. How do you know? It's peace. You feel it. Love, the greatest emotion that we even know. Even the world knows love is the greatest thing out there that you feel. We don't love by, I'm going to love by faith. That relationship's not going to last very long. No. I'm feeling, I'm encountering God, I'm experiencing it. I need it. I need it. You need it too. We need your glory, Lord. We need your glory, Lord. We need it, Lord. Once you realize how much that you need it, you will be unwilling to go without it. You will be unwilling, like your food, like your sleep. You will be unwilling to go without the presence of the Lord. Because you will realize that it affects your every single day. It affects your every moment, your every attitude. Everything that happens in your life is a direct consequence to have I been in His presence? Is this relationship functioning? Is it active? Is it moving? Is it alive? Is there something going on? Did it grow stagnant? You can look around you and see it's really clear. Oh, Jesus, we just love your glory. We just love your presence. Hallelujah. See, 
the things of religion and tradition and the things that we just do out of repetition just because, just because we're supposed to, just out of faithfulness, hey, that's going to get you so far, the whole, faith, the whole faithfulness side of it. But at some point, it's, it's got to be this passion and this relationship and this thing that you're feeling, you're overwhelmed with. You've, you've discovered the pearl of great price and that you're drawn back to it continually because you've experienced it. You've had the drink. You've had, you've had the drink. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Father. Jesus, we've, we've drank and we've, we've, we've had this drink that you've offered. And now we never thirst again. If you find yourself thirsty, what have you been drinking? Or have you been drinking? Mmm. When you drink something, it's supposed to fulfill. It's supposed to quench. If you find yourself continually drinking of other things... And never being filled and never being quenched, the thirst never being quenched. You are drinking from the wrong stream. You're drinking from the wrong stream. So easy. So easy. He's certainly not withholding this drink. Certainly not. Oh, Jesus. It's so good. It's so good. Religion and tradition, they're okay. They're okay with not getting lost in the presence of the Lord. They're okay with not being overwhelmed with the love and enjoying the peace that God has so freely provided for. It's okay with religion and tradition. If you find yourself coming into the meeting place, coming into the sanctuary and, and the throne room of God, and it being okay, you found yourself in a religious place, in a place of tradition. You came because you were supposed to come. That's why that's that's what's happening right there. You can identify it. Your hunger and your thirst will drive you to have his glory and his presence every single time. What are you giving your life in exchange for? What are you giving your life in exchange for every day? How many hours are going into all the stuff that you think you need? The work and the whatever it is that you do. You're giving your life in exchange for it. You are giving your one shot at this thing on the earth in exchange for whatever that is. You're trading it. It's what you're doing. You're trading it. When all of heaven's available, when the life of God is available, when the exact same life that Jesus lives is available for you to live every day and you're exchanging your life for what? I'll take his life. I'll take all that he has been made available. Yeah. It's so easy to get passive. It's so easy to let it slide. Whatever it is, it's just easy to let it slide. It's easy to push it off. It's easy to wait another day. Man, but when you've, when you've tasted and you've seen that the Lord is good and then all that stuff you spend all that time on, he wants to give you freely. He doesn't want you to have to give your 14 hours a day to it. He actually just wants to give you all that stuff. That's the easy stuff. The stuff that you're working so hard to attain and giving all your time to and that your heart is all wrapped up in. That's the stuff he just wants to give to you. Like freely. Freely. Like very easily. He just says, seek first my kingdom and my righteousness. I'll add all things unto you. All these things, the world seeks those. And then he says this, your father knows you need them. He knows you have need of all that stuff. I was reading that the other day and it blew me away. Father knows I need all that stuff. He already knows I need that stuff. He knows I have to pay the rent. He knows I have to pay the phone bill. He knows, he knows that. He's not unaware of that. I'm like, why, why, why are we freaked out about any of that? God knows. He knows. And he has an answer for it. He's like, I know you have need of it. Seek first my kingdom. Take care of my stuff. I'll take care of your stuff. Take care of all this. I'll take care of that. It's how it works. It's how it works. We are the abiding place. This is the most radical church on the face of the earth. Now, we just got to, we're just going to 
We're just going to go deeper. We're just going to go higher. We're just going to go jump into this thing. We've got to lose our lives. We're required. We've been, we've been required when we said yes to Jesus to lose our lives, to lay it down, to lose it. Whoever loses his life will find it. Whoever loses his life, Jesus. Huh. Whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel will find it. He's going to take care of all the other stuff. If you seek and first his kingdom, if you've given all your heart and all your affection to his he takes care of all that. Does he possess the reins of your heart? Or is your heart like, like the reins on a horse or something and he can pull you here and he pulls you there because all your affections are with him. So if he moves, you move. If he feels it, you feel it. Is that how your heart is toward him? Or does other stuff have the reins of your heart? Does your finances have the reins of your heart? Most people, their finances have the reins of their heart. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Most people's finances are their treasure. Finances are treasure. It's a tool. We use it on the earth. God uses it, but it's certainly not our treasure. It's not what's important to us. It doesn't have our affections. That's here today and gone tomorrow. Gone. Then what do you got? You better be careful, you'll fall false securities. You fall. You got one security. You got one sure bet. Jesus, Christ in me, the hope of glory, the confidence of glory. That's it. That's it. We want to step over in this place of boldness and confidence and assurance in God. That God's supplying all my needs. That he's taking care of everything. Then he takes it a step further. When you, when you get really good at relaxing in God and just enjoying Jesus and watching him bless you and everything, then he takes it a step further. And then he's like, now I want you to rule and reign with me. Come on, you call the finances in. Tell that thing to obey you. Tell it to do, the, and you call it in, and it happens. Somebody's sick, well, pray for him. You tell it. You tell him to be healed. And in my name, tell him to be healed. And we do. It's awesome. Awesome. You got no answers out there, right? You got no answers out here. If you're ever looking out here for any of your answers, for anything you need, for any of your fulfillment, you are looking in the wrong place. Remember, you gave your life to Jesus. There is one source we drink from now. One source. You find all your answers on your knees. You find all your answers in his presence. That's it. That's it. When the storms of life come, Lord Jesus. That's it. That's it. I'm not looking anywhere else. I'm not looking anywhere else. If our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ won't get it for us, then we just won't have it. Forget about it. Not interested. Not interested. Not interested in what an arm of the flesh can do. Not interested. That's a snare. That's a snare. You'll get stuck in the rest of your life. Well, but it's this one thing right now I'm just going to get alone for. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to figure a way out. No, 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 no. You, you get yourself stuck in that. You'll be in that the rest of your life. We we'll give our lives over to God. We say, God, you're my deliverer. God, have your way. Have your way in my family. Have your way in my finances. Have your way in everything. And God takes care of everything. He takes care of his kids really good. I mean, really, really, really good. It's part of his covenant. You know, part of his covenant is to make you wealthy. It's part of his covenant to do those things, to do that. That is part of it. Now, it's not the way you, most people think it happens. It's not you working so stinking hard. You know, and then all this money comes in and then you're going to be able to bless the kingdom and then you're going to be, it doesn't really work that way. <laughs> Giving it should be given to you. That's how it works. Giving it should be given to you. The same measure that you give, it'll be measured back to you. God has a way. We want all of God's benefits. We want all, don't we want all of God's benefits? You know, in fact, I'm sure the whole world wants all of God's benefits. But not everybody is willing to do it God's way to get those benefits. They want to do what they want to do and get God's benefits. Don't work that way. Don't work that way. God laid it all out that everything is going to do. Love, joy, peace. Your emotions taken care of. 24 hours a day, happy. You mean if I go to a funeral, I won't even cry? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm talking a good God. Been to a few funerals in the last couple, couple, of, couple of years, and it kind of freaked me out at first. Everybody's crying like, aren't I supposed to be crying? I'm not sad. They knew the Lord too, so it was a, you know, praise God. But, but I'm like, everybody's still crying. And I'm like, I'm not sad. Is there something wrong with me? You know, you grow in God. And, you know, I'm sure the last time I went to a funeral as a kid or something, I'm crying. But now I'm like, God's good. I don't feel sorrow. I'm not sad. Yeah, I miss him. But I, I, don't, feel, I don't feel that. I don't feel that. I, I, 
I've been practicing love and joy and peace so long, I saw a few. I feel good. I'm trying not to laugh at the funeral, you know. I mean, people think you're crazy. you got a lot of explaining to do. But he's provided all these things in the realms of our emotions, in the realms of our finances. Complete work. A complete work. Complete everything. All the way to the day when we meet him face to face. A complete work. He did not save us from hell to make us live in hell all the way till we get to heaven. He didn't do that. It's a glorious, overcoming life. It's a life of success and being filled and being blessed. That's the life that he's called for us. That is the life that he's prepared and he's called us all to. It's what he's called us all to. That's the pearl of great price, Jesus. He says, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. When we said yes to Jesus, so there was a whole package available. Now, we haven't necessarily always taken advantage of the whole package, but yet it remains available to all of us. Freely, easily, just cost you your life. What will you give your life in exchange for? What did you give your life in exchange for today? We have another opportunity tomorrow to give our lives in exchange for something. And I'm not saying you quit your job. Maybe you have to. I don't know. But we don't want anything to have our hearts. We want him to have our hearts. We want him to have our everything. These realms are available to us. I'm telling you, if you would just get bold and confident and absolute in God, you would be amazed at the things that would start happening in your life. Just because if you just stop being a little wishy-washy about your faith, if you just be bold and just be like, here's what God said. I believe this. This is what's going to happen. And just go for it. You know, I used to practice when I first started getting a hold of faith, just losing my voice every week. That's just where I was. That's where I was at the time. I'm like, I'm going to yell and declare these things and I'm going to, God's good. And da, 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 da. I lose my voice every week. And, uh, you know, I got, I got past. I don't have to lose my, my voice to know God and walk in faith. But man, I was just in it, in it. There's not one thing that you give up. There's not one thing that you will give up in that world out there that God will not give you a million times over in glory and a million times over in his ways and what he has for you. I remember when I, when I got saved and baptized in the Holy Ghost, man, it was game over for me. Like, I got radical that day, and I've been radical ever since. Like, it, I was like, oh, my gosh, God is real. That means the whole Bible's real. Oh, my goodness. If the whole Bible's real, woo, I got some catching up to do. That, got, that became real to me. I didn't go from there to, like, religious Christian and learn a few couple of script, good scriptures and that was in about went on with my life man no I read the Bible and I was like oh my goodness I remember enjoying the presence of Jesus so much and there would be time there'd be times and I came out of a crazy you know lifestyle in the world and all that nonsense and uh, I remember times right when I got saved that I would I'd go back to those houses where all my friends were hanging out and they're having parties and all that and I just had to do it and I'd drive by and I'd roll down the window and I'd scream I'm not missing out on nothing. <laughs> I'm like, I, wa- I was just, I wanted him to know. I'm not missing out on anything. You're missing out. And, uh, and I would. I'd go around and pray for him, lay hands on him. Glory to God would touch him almost every time. It was awesome. I mean, it was awesome. I brought so many people to church, so many crazy people to church. The first few months I, I knew the Lord, it was wild. I mean, it was wild. I don't think the church knew what to do with him. And, uh. Hallelujah. We just love his we just love his presence. We love his glory. Will you commit with me that when you come into the house of God that you will touch heaven? That you'll just commit that you're going to always touch heaven. Like you're not going to be religious, you're not going to be just traditional. It's what you do. You're going to your relationship will make it so you that you will always touch heaven. You know it's easy. It's real easy. You just got to relax and you just start telling Jesus how much you love him. So you just do it. And if pastor says yell, it says yell, you yell. Yell louder than anybody. If pastor's praying in the Holy Ghost, you're praying in the Holy Ghost. Pastor's singing, I'm singing because I'm following my head. 
who's following Christ Jesus, who's following the Father. And they're all going to lead us into glory. Just do what they do. We just follow the leader. We follow the leader. This is what we do. Hallelujah. Right now, I'm following the leader. I'm following the Holy Ghost. The anointing. Here to teach us all things. Mm. 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 Without the anointed, I mean, we are naked. We're naked. We're unclothed. We've got nothing, we got nothing to offer. It's a shameful state without the anointing. Because it's just you. A mere man. We're called to live in a miracle life, right? A miracle life. You, you, when, when we said yes to Jesus, we're called to live the Jesus life. The life of Jesus was made available for us to live out a miracle life. Miracles every day, miracles in every way, and everything we do, miracles, miracles, miracles. That's going to require an anointing. That's going to be required to be in the anointing. It's what we're called to. You were never called to live a Christian life outside of the glory and the anointing of God. But most people try to do it. And that's why they're failing. That's why it's not all good all the time. Not supposed to live outside of it. Never called to live outside of his glory. Never called to live outside of his anointing. Never tried to do things. Never tried to minister. Never supposed to minister. Never supposed to do any of those things outside of his glory. Outside of his anointing. Paul said, I came not with persuasive words of man's wisdom, but with the Holy Ghost and with power. The demonstration. Never called to do anything. You're not called to do anything. You're not called to, uh, you're not called to interact with your spouse. You're not called to interact with your kids. You're not called to do anything outside of his anointing. Because all we got is you. You need his glory. You need his presence. I'm not saying you're drunk in the Holy Ghost completely beside yourself, you know, every time, all day long. You have to be able to function. I'm trying to think how to say this, but you feel the presence of God, but it's as if you, you take that glory and you channel it into whatever you're doing as it were. You're taking that glory and you, you're just focusing it. You know, it's like when we pray for people, you know, a lot of times, you know, we know that the anointing is a point of contact. It's focus. We're praying. You can be back there and you're praying for something and you put your hand out there because you're in it. You're praying with Pastor Mark. You're in it. You're, you're focused with your prayer and what you're doing. And we do that with the anointing. We do that with the anointing. Some people touch the realms of God and the realms of uh, glory and the first manifestation that happened is the Holy Ghost. And that's whether it's them doing this with their arm, like, oh, it's the Holy Ghost, look. And so every time they feel the Holy Ghost, this is what has to happen when I feel the Holy Ghost. Not, not necessarily. I'm not saying you, you stop, stop God when he's moving on you. But that's not the Holy Ghost. You might be feeling the Holy Ghost and it's making your body do crazy stuff and you might fall on the floor and you do all these other things. That this glory of God, it's holy, it's precious, it, 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 it's beautiful. I'm even careful talk, how we talk about it sometimes. We talk about it uh, as this intoxicant, as this being drunk. Because I just want to keep it so holy. I don't want to make, make it too much like the world, man. It's too beautiful. It's too holy. We do get lost in the presence. We, we're not drunk with wine where it's in excess, but we're filled with the Spirit. And it, it, it is, does feel that way. And we have Bible for, for people who are just lost in the presence of the Lord. And they look drunk. But man, these realms are holy. They're holy. They're holy. If you would just start to acknowledge the presence of the Lord more, as Pastor Daniel was saying, when you wake up throughout the day, his presence would be hanging around more. It would be hanging around more. And the more hunger you'd get for it. Because you're continually tasting and seeing how good it is and you just want more and more and more. And it makes it so easy to drink that when you come in here, boom, you're in the presence of God immediately. A lot of times, oftentimes, in meetings all over the world, people have to have like, you know, three and four and, and five hour meetings because it takes that long to get people lost in the Holy Ghost where the Spirit of God can minister like He wants to. It'd be awesome to like come in all full of the Holy Ghost. We get her done then. You come in and the glory of God falls and Holy Ghost starts ministering. We take care of some stuff. I mean, we probably have still long services anyway because we love the glory of God. But anyway, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Our lives are so short, so short. Lord, tell that on my heart for the past, really the past couple months that what we give our lives in exchange for because we do trade. We trade every day. 
Every minute we trade, we trade away our lives that we only get one shot at. We don't get a do-over. There's no plan, there's no life B on the earth. There's just this one that we trade for. What will you give in exchange for your life? Your life is a vapor. It's here today. It's gone tomorrow. Have you numbered your days? The Bible tells us to number our days. Have you thought about, nobody likes to think about this, but let's just get real. Have you thought about the year you're going to die? You thought about it? If you live to be 70, if you live to be 80, whatever it is. Have you thought about that year? Write down the year. Just write down a year. I could die from here to here. Just, just write that down. And look at that. That's going to make some things that are pretty real for you. I promise. You write it down. Man, 2048, I'm going to be 70. Whoa. It's going to make some things really real to you. Your life on this earth has an expiration date. It has an expiration date. I don't know what it is. You don't know what it is. God knows when it is. Number your days. Daniel wakes up with very specific goals. I wake up with very specific goals too for that day. Things I'm going to accomplish. And God oftentimes tweak them, but I start with something. I start with something. We got we to gotta value and we got to treasure the short time that we have. It's like that. It's not very long. It's here today. It's gone tomorrow. What are you doing? Are you giving your life in exchange for your career, for your dream? My dream is to, my this, my... Is that what you're giving your life in exchange for? I promise you, God has amazing stuff for you that's far better than your dream and your career and your whatever. It's far better. It's far better. And I'm not saying that what is your dream isn't your God-given dream. Maybe it, 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 it is that. We just want his will and we just want his way. In fact, we want his will the way he wants to do it too. We don't want just the benefits, trying to come up any old way because you're not allowed. He's got a very specific way, a very specific way he blesses, a very specific way that he's going to fulfill all that he wants to do in your life. <clears throat> it's good to take a bird's eye view, as it were, of your life. I was telling School of Evangelism um, last night, I watch these NASA documentaries about the space shuttle program and things like that. And uh, I'm watching this one. I think it's about the Apollo 7 mission or something like that. And up until this point, we had never been out into um, deep space. We'd only been just outside of the atmosphere and kind of hung out right there. So the earth was really close, right? So it's big and it's blue and it's right in front of you. And so they go out in this Apollo 7. They're going to go around the moon. And so they go, they go around the moon, and it's dark for a while because they're on the dark side of the moon. And they come around again, and they're all excited because they're taking these photos of the moon because nobody's ever seen it, and they're looking right there. Oh, my gosh, look at the craters, and there's that, and there's this. And then they come around the moon, and all of a sudden, man witnesses the first earth rise as the earth rises from the other side of the moon as they come around. And everybody just stops, and nobody's looking at the moon anymore. Everybody's looking at the earth, this big, giant, beautiful marble called home, called where all of humanity is, called life as they know it, called their whole little world, with everything around them and their career and all that stuff, yet they got this view from however many thousands of miles away of the earth. And it's really cool because they started, you know what they started to do? They started to read the creation story. Scientists, sp astronauts, space guys, educated people. They have the Bible open and they're reading the creation story. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And it went out to like a billion people were watching on TV. I mean, it showed this image of this guy at like space command on earth with his TV monitor and seeing the earth because they're filming it so he's able to see it he's like looking at himself on the earth and it struck me so much it's so easy it's so 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 easy and we have to continually remind ourselves about this to get lost in your little world 
You're lost in your little world. You're lost in your job. You're lost in the family. You're lost in all the stuff that you do all around you, all around you. When life is going by like that and you need to take a little step back and look at the whole thing. Wow, I'm alive. I'm on the planet. God has a plan for me. It's far bigger than my little dream. It's far bigger than my paycheck. It's far bigger than my bills. It's far bigger than all the stuff that God said he wanted to take care of anyway. It's a bigger plan that he has laid out and established for us. He told us how we were going to do it too. It's pretty cool. He told us, he even told us how, you know, how we're going to do the gospel. He said, you're going to start in Jerusalem and you're going to work your way out. He said it over and over and over, multiple times. You know, Paul said, I fully preached the gospel from Jerusalem to Illyricum. said, uh, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you're going to be my witnesses. And from Jerusalem to, you know, just kept, and he always told us we're starting right here. And that's what we're doing. That's why we're, why we're doing it here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. We love your ways. We love your glory. We love it. We just give you our lives, Lord. We commit our lives afresh to you. We, we have lost our lives in, in this world. We don't want anything to do with the things of this world. Certainly not the things of sin and darkness. But not just even all the carnal things that would keep us just busy. The natural things that would just keep us busy. See, those things, the guys, they steal. They steal from us. They steal. They steal our, our passions and our affections and our time so that when you come in here that you're a little numb to the anointing. They steal from us because we've given so much of our time to it, to whatever it is, with TV or work, whatever it is. We give so much of our time to it that it desensitizes us to the things of the Spirit of God, to the glory of God, to the glory realm that we've been called to. And it makes it harder to drink. It makes it harder to touch the realms of heaven because we've been in earth. We've been in the fog. We're going to have it risen above. We're not up here seated with Christ in heavenly places above all that muck. We've been like living in it, even if it's not sin. Just, just, just carnal, normal, natural, earthly things. We don't want to give our lives to that. God's got something far better. Far, 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 far better. It's going to make you more satisfied than your dream. It's going to make you more satisfied than it. It's going to make you more. We're, we're warned. Let me read you this. We're warned. Let's face it. Most people, the American dream is I'm going to make a lot of money. I'm going to store it all up. And then I'm going to retire with a lot of money. And I'm going to kick back. And I'm going to relax. And I am going to enjoy all this, all my hard work, all my efforts. Well, Luke 12, 16 and 21 says this. And he told them a parable saying, the land of a rich man produced plentiful. And he thought to himself, what shall I do? For now, for, for I have nowhere to store my crops. I'm so, I'm so, I got so much money, I don't even know what to do with it all. And he said, I'll do this. I'll tear, tear down my barns. I'll build larger ones. There I'll store my grain and my goods. And this is Luke 12, 16 through 21. And I'll say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. God said to him, fool, this night your soul is required of you and the things that you have prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Most of the earth falls into this category. They're not rich toward God. Hear this properly. The blessing of the Lord does make one rich, but he adds no sorrow with it. And he has a way that he does it. And he doesn't do it by you just clawing your way to the top. That's a world's way. God's purpose to bless. God's purpose to prosper. God's purpose to meet every need. But he's got a very specific way. He's got a way that he does it. He's got a way that he wants it done. And because you're saved, any other way is not going to work for you. Do you know that? Since you signed up for his ways, you would have to denounce God to do it the world's way. It won't work. You said yes to God. So you got to follow through. you got to do the whole thing. Or it's never going to work. You're going to go in a circle and always be frustrated about your whatever in your life will always be a source of frustration. You got to follow through. It's like getting a DVD player and then deciding you're going to do anything you want with it. I'm going to put the DVD in the back because I want to. That's how I want to watch my movie. Nope. 
It don't work that way. You said yes to Jesus. He's got a way that, that it works. There's a way. There's a way. You give and it's given to you. So on and so forth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We want your way, Lord. We want your way. We want to do it your way. He's got a very specific way. He's got a very, you know, when I don't know what's, uh, uh, when I'm praying about something, or my prayer is this. I'm like, God, you have a very specific thought right now. Right now you're thinking something. Right now. What is it? I want to know what you're thinking. What are you thinking about this situation? What do you think about that? What do you think about this? You talk to God like that, like, you know, he's, he's, he's real, you know. You do know he's real. And he has thoughts and feelings. He's a real, real God. You could talk to him like that. God, what are you thinking about this? Hallelujah. That's the kind of relationship that we want. It's the kind that we want. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We don't want to seek the things that the Gentiles seek. We don't, want, we don't, see, we don't seek those things. Father knows we have need of these things. He says, look at the birds. The birds, a birdie, a little birdie outside, okay? A little birdie. It doesn't sow. It doesn't reap. It doesn't ga- it gather into, uh, into barns. Yet your father knows that, that you have need. I mean, you, your, father know, your father knows, he knows what you have need of. Does he not going to take care of you? He takes care of the bird. He doesn't have a savings account. He's fending for food all the time, yet God's continually providing for him. Is he not, is he not going to take care of you? And he says, oh, you a little faith. He's like, seek, seek first my kingdom. I know you have need of all these things. I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to take care of everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to live above all that. We want to live above all that. We want to live above all that in this place of glory. That's where we want to live. Where the things of heaven are more real to us than the things of earth. Where the things of heaven draw us more than the things of earth. Where the things of heaven pull on us more than the things of earth. We're more sensitive to the things of heaven than the things of earth. And that only happens out of a radical consecration. Radical consecration. I'm here every Sunday morning. I'm here every Sunday night. I'm here every Wednesday night because of a radical consecration. Because I know what I need. I know what I need. I need the presence of God. I need the glory of God. I need to touch heaven. I need to, I need to forsake not the gathering of the saints. I need to obey his very specific ways because that's when I get blessed. That's when everything gets taken care of. I don't forsake uh, my tithes and my offerings because I'm not going to stop up the blessing in my life. I'm not doing that. I know how it works. God's made all these things available if I just do what he says. So I'm just going to do what he says and have it all. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, we need to, you need to find yourself rehearsing, as it were, saying out loud to the Lord how much you love him, how much you love his ways. That will also develop an appetite, that continual reminder. The enemy, enemy in this world likes to come in and just, it's just like this fog bank. He just likes to throw out. Before you know it, it's been, you know, whatever, three hours and you haven't touched heaven. Before you know it, it's this thing, it's that thing. But you're you're back, you're back in that fog. And I'm not talking about like some crazy fog of depression or fog of whatever. I'm just talking about that you're just not lost in the glory of God. When the new norm for you becomes heaven, stepping out of the glory of God's like, oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I need to get, I need to, got to stop what we're doing and touch heaven again. Got to stop what we're doing and get in the glory and get in the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When you begin to pour out your life like an offering that it should be on the, on the Lord, to the Lord, on the Lord, man. Just pour your life out. Pour your whole life out like an offering. Take your life. Think about this. Think about your life. Think about all that you could do with it. All the years that you have to spend on the earth. All that could be done. Take it all. And then take that life and then offer it to the Lord. And say, whatever you want for my life. I want what you want for my life. I give my life to you completely. I give you all my time. I give you all my, my energy, all my efforts. I give you my everything. Take my life. Do whatever you want with my life. I believe that you can do more with the rest of my life than I could have done in 10,000 lifetimes. And you'll so honor that. You'll so honor it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I hear the Holy Ghost just drawing us, just drawing us to a deeper level of consecration. He's just drawing us, telling you to lose your life, forsake all that, forsake your life in this world, to, 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 to lay it down on the offer, to, uh, on the altar, and let the fire of come, of God come down and consume your life so that there's nothing else left for you to hold on to, to go back to tomorrow. That he consumes your life from the altar with his fire and there's nothing left for you to go back to tomorrow. There's nothing left. Nothing but Jesus, but his presence, but his glory, but his ways. That's all that's left. Father, I ask you for your fire to come down tonight in this place and burn up everything that's not of you yes. everything that's of man I ask you to burn it up tonight Lord to all the consecrated ones to all those who, who are putting their life on the altar send your fire Lord send your fire Lord send your fire we won't think it's strange concerning all these trials that are going to come to test us because we're asking for your fire it's there to try us. It's there to test us. It's there to make us pure gold. Better than we were before. No other way to get there but through the fire of God. We want it, Lord. Send your fire. Send your fire to our lives, Lord. Send your fire. We don't count our lives dear to ourselves, Lord. We don't count our lives dear. We lay it down. Take our lives, Lord. Take our lives, Lord. Take our lives. Jesus. Jesus. We live for you. We live only for you. We're going to trust you with our lives. We're going to trust you with our lives. You can trust him with your life. He's going to do much better than you could have done with it. You can trust him with your life. He's going to do a lot better than what you could have done. You can trust him with your life. I'm giving you all my life, Lord. I'm holding nothing back, Lord. Take all of me, take all of me. Take all of me. I'm giving you everything. Holding nothing back for me. I'm giving you everything. Giving you everything. Jesus. Jesus. I'm holding nothing back for me, giving everything to you. Take my life, Lord, 
take my life, Lord. I want you to commit right now. I want you to commit your life to the Lord. I want you to give it to him. I want you to lay it down again right now. Lay it down again. Never to pick it up again off that altar. To leave it right there. Jesus, you just tell him. You be bold. And you tell him. Jesus. Jesus. Lord, I want your ways, Father. I want your ways for my life. I don't want my ways. I want your ways. Father, I want your ways, not my ways. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Feel it, I'm a little more nice. Sit in a little bit of a neighbor. Frame it in a little more nice. Sit in a little bit. Use me, Lord. Take my life. Use me, Lord. Take my life. Do what you will. Do what you want. Take my life. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. For your purposes. For your plan, Lord. My life is made for you. I'm made to worship you. I'm made to serve you, God. Take my life. Take my life. Take everything, take everything, Lord. I leave none for me. Take everything, take everything, take everything, take everything. I will follow, 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 I will follow you, Jesus. Father, I ask you to stir up a hunger and a thirst like your people have never had before. Such a hunger, such a thirst for your ways, for your presence, for your kingdom. Father, such a hunger, such a thirst that moves them past all that's human, that that moves them past all that's natural. A miracle takes place. A supernatural kicks in. For it's what's required to move forward in God. For it's what's required for these miracles to take place. For it's what's required for a world to be saved. We step over into this miracle realm. We step over. We step over. We step over to this new level of consecration. Father, we give our lives to you. Any places we've held back, we lay it down. For it's what's required to move on for it's what's required to go over into this next place and in this deeper realm to this other place from God. It's what's required because it's what's required. So we'll do it, Lord. So we lay our lives down. Jesus, send your fire. Send your fire. Send your fire. Send your fire, Lord. Oh, se para ni yara bu kudu si la e o tuai. Ere mo tu si ara mai. Ere mo tu si a. Ere mo tu si a. Ere mo no si ara mai. Ere mo nu si ara mai. Jesus ya la ti ara mo tu ya ra batu si a. Mi ere mo no si bre bre na me ne si bre bre na me na me ne bre bre na ma tu si na me na ma tu bre bre na ba ta. Mi ere mo no si bre bre na me na me ne bre bre na me na me ne si bre bre na me na me bre bre na me na ya tu bre na ma bre bre asta. Fi ni ala ma na si bre bre na me na ya la tu bre bre na ya la ma tu bre bre na ya la ma tu bre bre na ya la ma ti ara ma na ita. Hi bre bre na ma tu bre bre na ba tu bre bre na ba tu bre bre na ma tu bre bre na ba tu bre bre na ba not another day right now not another day right now not a future day right now right now right now right now right now right now not another day not a day in the future or right now or right now hallelujah um, just a few minutes as in the, uh, what pastor Kelly was saying I saw um, you know like a bar you see, if you ever watched a pole vaulter, you know, just, just what I saw, like a pole vaulting bar, bar and, and they raise it up a notch, and God's just speaking to me. There's, a, there's, a, there's another level that the Holy Ghost wants to take us to tonight, and this atmosphere that the Holy Ghost has set is such a level of consecration, just an atmosphere of consecration. And that's, that's, how, God, that's how God does it. He sets it up. Where if we'll consecrate, if we'll take that next step in consecrating our lives, He'll take us up to another level. And just in this atmosphere, in this this place, I want anybody that wants to go up next level, come up here and find a place and let's just kneel before the Lord. Let's just let's just get into this, this to prayer. There's a wonderful atmosphere of prayer and of consecration. We want to take our lives and let it be an offering to the Father. We want our lives to be so consecrated. We are in such a a, a, a crucial time and a crucial day. Right now, we need to cry out that the, that the moving of the Holy Ghost would be in this place. Pastor Kelly and I, we're going to come by and we're just going to lay hands on you. Just pour out your heart to the Father. Offer up 
A prayer to the Father, committing yourself with a fresh consecration. There's always a deeper level of consecration because there's always a deeper level that He wants to draw us into, into His glory, into His presence. Father, right now we consecrate our lives to You afresh. Father, we say there is nothing that You can't have here. Father, there's nothing You can't have here. We are Yours. We're here to live for You. We consecrate our lives, Father, to live for you in everything we do and everything we say. Father, let your glory be revealed in our lives. Let your glory be revealed in this place. Father, we must have the moving of your Spirit. We must have you, Father. Father, we must have you. Come and move by your Holy Ghost. Come and move by your Spirit, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus.
I just want to say this. The Lord just kept bringing it to my attention while I was praying for you guys that he's given us all specific skills and things that we're good at and giftings and things in our lives. And they're for him. He gave that to us for his purposes so that we could rule and reign with him, that we could do things with him. He gave us these skills and these gifts and these things in our lives so we could operate with him and do these things. The enemy wants to come in and distort those things and get you distracted with your gifts and with your skills and with careers and all those things that you pursue. He wants to get you distracted. He wants to make your life about something else. He wants to send you in another direction. He wants to make it, my 10-year plan is this, my five-year plan is this. He wants to do that. They're not for him. They're not for that. They're for the Lord. Your gifts, your skills, your calling, the things in your life, they're for him. They're for his purposes. You don't have to worry about what that looks like. They're for him. They're for him. People get paralyzed by not knowing what to do, but they're all for him. It's all for him. Forget about it. Forget about it. We're thinking about three steps down the road. God says, take one step. Like, I don't know how to walk in the water. Who does? Step out. Right? We take one step. We don't need the whole thing. We don't need the whole thing. God's the one with the bird eye view. Bird's eye view. He's looking at this whole thing. We just trust him. God says, move, we move. Then he says, move, and then we move again. And then it starts to unfold all the plans and everything that he has for our lives. We're just faithful to saying yes to the next thing. Tonight it was this. It's a consecration. On your way home, it's going to be something else. When you get home, it's going to be something else. When you wake up, there's going to be something else. You get to, you get to uh, decide. You get to make another decision. Is it concentrated to the Lord? Is my life about him? Is what I'm doing about him? Is what I'm giving my time to about him? Amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. I don't know what I do without the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. taught me to do I'm gonna lay down my life like you taught me to do I'm gonna lay down my life like you taught me to do gonna lay down my life for you for you gonna lay down my life like you taught me I'm gonna lay down my life like you taught me to do. I'm gonna lay down my life like you taught me to do. I'm gonna lay down my life 
like you taught me to do I'm gonna lay down my life Like you taught me to do I'm gonna lay down my life Like you taught me to do I'm gonna lay down my life Like you taught me to do I'm gonna lay down my life Like you taught me to do I'm gonna lay down my life Like you taught me to do Gonna lay down my life I want everybody just to pray with me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I give my life to you. Only for your purposes. From this day forward. Let everything that I do be about your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, hug everybody that you can see. You don't have to move, but you are dismissed. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. So awesome.